Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk another COVID-19 myth. This one is so bad that when I first read it, I actually thought it must come from QAnon or something, and it turns out it does, but that's not really important. Let's just get into why it's wrong and what the science is. So there's this idea spreading around that the COVID-19 diagnostic test, which is a polymerase chain reaction, or a PCR, was actually never meant to detect viruses, and it can't even detect viruses. As a molecular biologist who has done this test countless times, what? I mean, seriously, this test has been used for decades, not only in the clinic to diagnose infections, but also in the research lab to discover entirely new species of viruses and bacteria. We know how this test works, and we know that it works. So why are people saying that it doesn't all of a sudden? So far, the only answer I've been able to pull out of conspiracy theorists is that the inventor himself, Kerry Mullis, said that it was never meant to detect viruses. Well, that's interesting, because not only did Kerry Mullis never say that, he's also a pretty wacky guy. He was an AIDS denialist, and he claims to have seriously talked to glowing space raccoons. I'm not kidding. Yeah, he would trip off of LSD and actually claim to talk to glowing green space raccoons. But again, he never said that PCR cannot detect viruses. Even if he did, though, he would be wrong. And to prove it to you, I'm going to take you through the science. People who criticize COVID-19 tests like to say that it's just detecting RNA, and there's RNA in your cells and in lots of living things. So how can it detect the coronavirus specifically? Well, that's kind of the point of PCR. There's a component in the test that you can customize in order to specifically detect whatever you're looking for. First, I'll do the explain it like I'm five explanation, and then we'll get into a little bit more detail. You can think of PCR as the control F function on your laptop. Imagine you have all published fantasy books on one Word document in your computer. If you type control F and look for the phrase, you know nothing Jon Snow, you're not going to get Harry Potter. You're not going to get Lord of the Rings. You're going to get Game of Thrones. This is pretty much how PCR works. You can customize it to test for a very specific combination of letters in a genetic code. And if that genetic code is there, the test will tell you. If it's not there, it'll ignore everything and you'll get a negative result. This is the same test that can be used in forensics in order to do things like prove a suspect's guilt or innocence in a crime, or do things like paternity testing. On a molecular level and in a COVID test, PCR works like this. You start with a genetic sample, which can be DNA or RNA. In the case of this coronavirus, it's RNA. Once you have that extracted from your sample that you've taken from the patient by either swabbing their nose, their throat, or collecting a cheek sample, then you take that genetic material and you incubate it with a bunch of different reagents. These reagents include an enzyme called DNA polymerase, which in this test is going to recognize the genetic material you want and make copies of it. But it doesn't just bind to any genetic material. The researcher has to guide it to what they're looking for. And that's done by adding what we call DNA primers. So the enzyme and all the other reagents are like the software that you use on your computer when you use the control F function to find a specific phrase in your document. And the primers are like what you type in. That is what the researchers customize in a PCR to find what they're looking for. Researchers can use a chemical reaction to make these short sequences of DNA that we call DNA primers to have any letter combination that we want in any order that we want. So we can make DNA primers that will only ever match with your DNA, or a dog's DNA, or a virus's DNA. Just to be specific, COVID has an RNA genome, so we're looking for RNA, but that doesn't change anything. DNA can still match with RNA, and the enzyme that we're using in the COVID test is called reverse transcriptase, which uses the RNA as a template to make DNA. So the test is the same. Only when the DNA primer has found a matching sequence will the enzyme bind to that sequence and make a copy of it. This process cycles over and over again, and your copies of very specific DNA 
grow exponentially until they're easily detectable by the researcher. So obviously, the primers in this case are really crucial for the test. If they are not specific to what you're looking for, you're going to get all sorts of background and false positives. Right now, from your computer, you can actually test for yourself how specific the COVID-19 primers used in the COVID-19 diagnostic tests are for the COVID-19 virus. And I'm going to show you how. This is a sequence for a DNA primer used in a COVID-19 diagnostic test. It is freely available and I'll link it to you in the description. All you have to do to test how specific it is, is take the sequence and copy it into a software called BLAST. This software will take the sequence that you give it and BLAST it. It'll compare it against all known sequences in genomic databases. Think of this again as the control F example, except in this case, it's looking for whatever you put into it against all genomic data ever sequenced. All genomic data is available to you at any time online in this database. Pretty cool, right? So when we do this search using a COVID-19 DNA primer used in PCR tests, our results show us that it's only matching with the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. Nothing else. Let's do it for another primer. I'm going to copy it again, put it into BLAST, and see what we get. What do you know? Only SARS-CoV-2. You can do this over and over again with any primer that's publicly available. It's very specific for SARS-CoV-2. It's not going to show you influenza. It's not going to pick up random RNA in your cells. It's only going to tell you if you have COVID-19. Now with any diagnostic test, it's possible to have a false positive or a false negative. In this case, a false positive is pretty unlikely and most often due to some lab error. What's more likely is a false negative, but even that is still pretty rare. Keep in mind, this whole time I've been talking about PCR tests. There are antibody tests. These are very different, and the, even though they're much cheaper and much faster to get results, they are less accurate than PCR tests. So when you're reading about COVID tests, make sure you know which one they're talking about. But whether we're talking PCR tests or antibody tests, mass testing is one tool that we really need if we're going to get a handle on this pandemic. Knowing who has it and who doesn't have it, who's symptomatic and who's asymptomatic is super important. Diagnostic testing works and we need a lot more of it right now. So if you hear people saying that COVID-19 tests don't work for this or that reason, show them this video or ask them to email any molecular biologists at their local university. I guarantee they'll tell you the exact same thing. Well, I think that's another COVID-19 myth done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. It only takes one click and it really helps me out. So until next time, stay informed, stay safe. I'm Dr. Wilson. This has been Debunk the Funk. And join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.